H M E G H A N W A L S H. And uh, is there a title you were the group or did? Uh, I'm here and we are with several organizations. We're with Punish for Protecting, uh, Family uh, Court Anti-Corruption Coalition, um, Citizens and Bikers for a Brighter Future, and several others are here with us today. So Megan, tell me why, why are you here today? Uh, I'm here actually uh, for a final hearing or to move towards termination of my parental rights through CPS uh, in Indian River County here against my family. Uh, why protest? Uh, because we have a huge national issue and actually a global issue dealing with corruption within CPS and DCF, taking our children unlawfully and, uh, and having no incentives to return them. We really need to address this issue, um, especially this county has really been coming forward with a lot of these cases and sadly at this point it is a playbook for this system and it is not in the best interest of our children or our families. So what do you hope to get accomplished? I hope to first of all to uh, shine truth on this situation and this system that truly needs to be addressed immediately and ended. There are simply better ways to handle this and, uh, and this is not the way. Um, I am hoping that the judge and the people involved in this will come to their senses, if you will, for lack of a better term, and will do what's right. Again, there are real situations and there are ways to address these situations. And tearing families apart, ripping children from their homes is not the way. We need to be offering services to the people involved in this and maintaining the children in their environment for their safety and for their, their future and well-being. So, you see a problem with DCF? I'm sorry? Do you, do you see a problem with uh, the way DCF? I do. I do. I see a huge problem, and I'm by far not alone. Um, I was an advocate speaking out against family court corruption and DCF CPS corruption prior to this happening. Uh, I was also speaking up about abuse, so domestic violence is huge in this. Um, and then my children were taken under false accusations. Um, unfortunately, the masses have been given a huge narrative that this is the best interest of the children. And most people, fortunately, don't ever have to deal with this. But the ones that do truly know the horrific nature and the terrors that happen, abuses, and how this destroys us truly within the system. It's, it's heartbreaking. Is there anything else you want to add that I didn't ask you? Um, I don't think so. I just wish that everyone would reach out, really start researching this, this issue and start looking up family corruption or CPS corruption. There are hundreds of thousands of grieving parents across this country and globe begging for their children to come home. And it's time to stop this. This is all for profit. This is a racket and it's, it's not acceptable anymore. These are lives. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Advocate John Walsh, what Megan's about to talk about today is it's pretty alarming. I previously privately spoken with her. Now, the reason I am live streaming this on IRN because none of your local news outlets, with the exception of WPBF 25, are covering this because, again, the, only me and WPBF 25, we also work news outlets covering this event right now, is because of the fact that this is something going on. There's people gathering here at the courthouse. People probably want to know why is this happening. And as far as I'm concerned, with fact and fiction, I think in due time we'll be separated from us. I'm going to leave this up to you, the viewer, to judge what is going on. I will say for the record that on the judge on Megan's case is his wife is the campaign manager for County Commission candidate Tom Luther. Take that as you will. Like I said, what's fact and fiction? We'll get separated out in due time, but that is some information I wanted to provide to the viewer. I'm going to go ahead now and turn it over to Megan. We're going to go ahead and get this press conference. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for coming today and supporting us. Uh, unfortunately, I wish we were all here under better terms. Um, I'm about to go in for a hearing on my own pro se. Um, and I am so blessed, first of all. I want to thank everyone for the support. Um, and I'm thankful for everyone that's come out and really represented the families within CPS that uh, have been affected in our community. Uh, as I've said many times, this is a national issue that we are dealing with and even a global issue at this point. Um, we're here to really speak out with our hearts and, and hope 
hope that everyone can really research for themselves, look into this issue. This is dealing with children's lives, and our system is taking our children from loving, loving parents across this country. We've seen it all over. We just saw it in Idaho with baby Cyrus. If you are not familiar with these cases, please look into them. We're here today to speak up and stand up and just say that there are simply better ways for this system to operate and to be truly protecting our children. At this time, our system is destroying our families. It's traumatizing and abusing our children. It's drugging them up. It is taking them from their primary environments where that is the best interest of the children. This is not about our children and this is not about protecting them as it stands today. And we all need to stand up, do our research and realize the reality and horrors of this system. Uh, people are realizing across the country and unfortunately children are taken, false allegations are made and there's no incentive within our state or country to return these children. Yet there's high, high millions of dollars on the line to incentivize taking them from us. Um, there are many people speaking out across the country now and we're very lucky for that. And today we have high hopes that, you know, Indian River County could be a great example for how we can do better for our children, how we can really address this. This is not an oppositional fight. We're supposed to be doing this for our children and our family within this state and within this country. I just want to thank everyone here for coming and supporting. There's been people across the country. Uh, there has been a media blackout on this and I understand who my father is. I've admired him my entire life and I've known the same narrative that we all have. But unfortunately now we're here and my children are on the line over me speaking out. And uh, we really need to be here and all come together to stop these crimes being done to us legally through our system. So I just want to thank everyone again for coming here and, and God bless. Megan, do you have anything else you want to say to some people? Any other information you think that needs to be made to the public? Well, I just think that people really need to research. You know, again, our children are being taken, and I know it's very hard to conceive of that. We've all been told that this is for the best interest of our children, and unfortunately, the realities of this is that it's not. It abuses our children. It drugs them up, you know, for profit. Uh, it keeps them from their loving families and, and more. You know, I've, I've been speaking out all over the country. And people are more than welcome to look at my podcast, reach out to me, contact me, um, and join us. What's the best way that people can, can contact you, Megan? Uh, I do have Twitter. So that is Megan Walsh underscore M-E-G-H-A-N-W-A-L-S-H underscore. Uh, they can reach out there. And I have a small team that is, uh, is contacting and facilitating that for me. But I will be in touch with them. Now, on the local level, do you hear in your county potentially make a difference for what's going on with you and other parents that are in a similar situation? Well, I think that first and foremost what we're doing is we're asking people that went into this system with good intentions and working within it to come forward and speak about the realities of what's going on. Again, we can do better. There will be jobs available. They will not lose their jobs. We can offer services in a supportive way, not terrorizing families, parents, and children. All right, well, that sounds good. Thank you very much, Megan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much. God bless. Good luck today, Megan. God bless you too. You mind if I? Thank you. Before I 
I ran over here. So Megan, why, why did you decide to take the case pro se and not get a lawyer? Um, I did have representation. It was ineffective, and I found out that they were, you know, somewhat connected and tied. Um, there's also been a media blackout, and a lot of people are afraid to address the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, nationally we've been very supported, but locally, you know, we, we're seeing the true nature of our community. Are you a little bit nervous taking on the big establishment DCF um, I mean, I've lost everything, including my life, except for physically. My children have been ripped from their loving, uh, you know, life and, and everything by by these people. And, and hopefully, you know, the truth can come forward. I'm, I just feel blessed that this is a national issue that, you know, obviously God has chosen me to be a part of and, uh, and really bring these children home, not just for myself, but for others. You know. um, so if you get an adverse ruling here, what's your next step at that point? Uh, we have action. We have people coming forward and a great team developing. We do need more support, anyone that wants to get involved. And um, like I said, this is not just about me. I will be discussing this and addressing these issues even when my children come home. Um, so. so if they do come home today, are you going to still fight for the for Absolutely. This, this oh. is tearing our children apart, tearing our families apart. It's traumatizing people. It's forcing you know people to uh, commit suicide and kill their own children over this. Um, this is modern day Gestapo, and it's not okay. Um, there are better ways to do this. That's it's simply we shouldn't even have to fight. We should know that we allowed a system to exist that is not serving us. No longer longer if it ever was and we need to address this and have better ways especially for our taxpayer money the taxpayers don't realize that they are paying for this trafficking of our children the drugging of our children ripping families apart when we all want to stay in the best interest of children and unfortunately that's just not what's happening see the per perception nationwide with a lot of missing kids a lot of people say that DCF or uh, child protective services is a good thing you know mm -hmm. a lot of people we say hey get the kids out of the family mm -hmm. but we're I'm hearing a different side and I'm hearing not just from you but others that you know it's like an organization that mm -hmm. just rips the the child away from people's homes without due process mm -hmm. and then puts the kid into the state and who knows what happens at that point mm -hmm. I mean people are getting away with sheer allegations and hearsay um, my case alone had no investigation no due process um, and and yeah unfortunately if you'd asked me two years ago or three years ago I would have agreed I would have thought that it was um, but again after being an advocate prior to this and now my children being taken partly because of me speaking out you know, it's, it's become an issue that we need to address, and it's very apparent, sadly. Absolutely. A lot of times when, like, uh, you know, particularly me, you know, with criminal justice reform, once you become a victim of some sort of system, you know, with the institutions that we have, you want to be an advocate and cause mm -hmm. and expose it, and you're doing a great job doing that. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I Thank mean, you. this isn't, it's not easy. It's it's very hard, and, and these are lives and futures that we're, we're talking about here, and I just want to do what's best. I want to really be able to, uh, you know, really represent this and speak up for the other families involved. It's horrific. You know, people that want to take their children completely from someone and a mother are abusers. They're not good people and, and that goes throughout the system and the system is enabling abusers and we've seen that across the country now. People would just, you know, maybe look at that narrative that they've been given and and try to, to look deeper into that, to the realities. Absolutely, and I'll do what I can do on my platforms to share your story. Wish you luck today and praying thank for you. Thank you enough, Jonathan. You've had luck. people come out all over the country, and you know, you've been really solid in this and, and in the efforts for to expose all of these truths. So I really thank you. God You're bless welcome. you. God bless you. It's 25th of this month? Mm -hmm. 25th of this month? Yeah. For what? Yeah, for speeding everything.
they didn't listen to what Junior said. They had a whole plan. The DCF attorney was maybe knew that's what was going to happen. There's no winning in these kinds of things. Unless you have money. <laughs> what happens on the 25th? Uh, there's some advisory uh, hearing. I'm not sure because I'm not familiar with the, uh, you know, like everyone else were put through this and we don't know what. Why did they get stressed out? Like, it was a TPR. Uh, they were moving to terminate my parental rights. So for those, it becomes a, a um, confidential king group. Or I just rolled in late. Did they terminate the rights today? No, they're moving to in, uh, in June and, and after. We have, a, we have another hearing on the 25th. So what what did the judge say today? What exactly? Basically, happened? they accepted. They were saying that they were going to reunify us, and today, an hour before this hearing, DCF filed to terminate my rights, and they served me in there. So you went in today thinking that you were going to get your custody back and, yes, and get we've denied every filed motion that we've done. We've done it properly through paperwork, like law is supposed to, and they've ignored everything. But then they can go in and verbally ask for motions and filibuster and you know get go after my unborn child. And it's okay. Um, was the any of the Walsh family in there? We should move out of here, but. Um, Yes, my dad was escorted through the back. Through cool. the and back. The sheriffs, yeah. Of course. Yeah. And now they've got all this behind us if you need with your family. He's coming behind us? Yeah. <laughs> Is he real? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Did your father say anything in court today? No, he couldn't even look at me. He, and that doesn't make sense either. You don't say you love your child and you're having to do this. And you silent treatment is the largest form of abuse. Well, you know, I well, just have to have faith in God. And, you know, I hope that the truth and this will get people to actually research you know, nothing that I, I came forward as part of the community and I was asking for, you know, truth and, and thinking that my father might even be proud of me. over there? That. John over there? No, that's the two cops that are following us out because when you get escorted out of family, it's agenda. No, no. You don't get escorted out No. It's so secret. Why are they following us? Nobody knows. It's for intimidation. So, I was falsely arrested here last time. So you were in there today, and you were by yourself. Yep. And they had an army of lawyers and representatives for the state and stuff. How, how did that make you feel? This is this is domestic terrorism. They want to intimidate. They're you know, be I'm being now. forced to even say things that I never would have normally. I'm a very peaceful person. I'm a loving mother. And this is terrorizing people. This is terrorizing families. Using children, the the amount of money they care about case plans and dead and timelines because of the money that they get. I don't even know how this is even still in our in our world these days. I don't even know how this was ever even allowed to exist, and it needs to stop. So, what was that judge's name? That was Judge Meadows, Robert Meadows. Has Meadows been fair with you at all during this process? You know, I don't want to talk bad about anybody or anything, but Judge Lynn completely ignored the truth to this. He allowed all of it to happen, and Judge Meadows came in, and I was very hopeful, actually. We all were. And last time he was in, in court, he made it so that I have to come in person, and he yelled at me. We had 35 court watchers and advocates from all over the country watching and saw this judge be irate. What did he yell at you about? They were asking on the spot if I was pregnant because they had come the week prior through our neighborhood hunting me, uh, knocking on doors and uh, asking if anyone had seen a pregnant lady. I mean, we we filmed it. We sent it to Governor DeSantis. We've sent uh, the notice of liabilities to DeSantis, to Ashley Moody, to the Inspector General, to Mar-a-Lago. 
you know, I grew up going to Mar-a-Lago and, and staying with Trump and, you know, doing all of this, and it's time. So, it's um, time to address these issues. You are pregnant right now? Yes, I how, am. How many months? Uh, I'll, I'll be doing a little bit. In a couple months, I'll be having the baby. So with the situation that you have now, <laughs> is the state going to try They're to... take after, yes. Your child, yes, they once are. you have your child. Mm-hmm. Um, what grounds do they have to do that? Uh, just this case already, based on all false allegations from my father and my mother. And, uh, you know, sadly, we've, we've entered all the evidence and we have more. And uh, there's a lot that I haven't put out. You know, there's a lot on my father and my parents. And if people just look into my brother's case, you know, 40 years later, it is very apparent what's going on here. Um, so the, the father of your children now, is there any way they can get the custody? Post, your father's trying to get the custody of the, the my children. My father's trying to get the custody. He's been coordinating this for a while. He has a large team. Uh, the fathers of my children were abusers, and that's why I had sole custody. There were no fathers on birth certificates. I have taken care of my children for 10 years now. You know, uh, I've been known in the community as a loving mother and, and support for the community and families. You know, We've been all over. So this is, it's, it's very Twilight Zone, if you will, and, and uh, I'm just trying to stay in it for everybody else as well, not only my children, myself, but like I said before, this is, I mean, we all know, this is, this is a huge national issue and global issue. So I know you're going to process what's going on to the next hearing. What, what steps do you think you're going to take between now and then? Well, we've, we've done all the filings and we've put in the motions. They're supposed to be in default and, and this should be dismissed, but, you know, that should also raise alarms as to what's going on here. They refuse to get their claws off of my children to see the truth. Uh, we've offered any proof that they've needed. So, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna look and ask for lawyers, you know, anyone out there that would like to support and get involved in what's right and knows these issues. Again, we're not here to fight anyone. We want to do what's right, and we want the truth of these situations and these children and the abuse and, our, and the parents, you know, going through it to be out so that we can, we can fix it. You know, law enforcement should be working with us. You know, we're supposed to be for the community and what's best for that. And there's so many better ways to support families and, and keep children together and families together. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you say to the other uh, other parents in this area in Indian River County that are going through the same situation as oh, you? Oh, gosh, I know there's so many of us, unfortunately, from what I've found over the past year. And, I just really encourage anyone to please reach out to me, Um, anyone going through this. We've had great turnout today um, of other mothers and and fathers going through this locally, and it's devastating. You know, it's devastating to see, but please reach out. Again, any lawyers, any families going through this, reach out. I'm here for this Is there a platform? How do they reach you? Uh, On Twitter. I'm on Twitter at um, Megan Walsh, M-E-G-H-A-N. W A L S H underscore. Uh, so they can reach me there as well. Um, I have Save Megan's Children at protonmail.com is my direct email. So again, that's Save Megan's, plural, M E G H A N S Children at protonmail.com. I'm here for, you know, we, we need to come together. It's time and in a peaceful way, you know, to really correct this and get our children home to heartbroken parents. The children are begging. Do you see any future reconciliation with your father? Um, Well, I think, first of all, it should raise huge alarms to everyone involved in protecting him uh, with what he's doing, the way he's going about it. Um, His story does not add up saying, I care about my daughter, but yet ripping everything from me, um, you know, not speaking with me, not trying to work this out at all. And, you know, for me, I think about my children down the line most of all. You know, they're going to grow up, and children do grow up. That's what people aren't thinking about in the system. And they are going to know that I was adopted. I was stolen and adopted out. I was taken under this. I was taken under that. You know, I will be their mother forever. And they know the truth. These children know the truth. That's the problem. You know, and this is severe abuse mostly to them. Do you know where your children are right now? Uh, They're on my father's island with him. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. God bless. God Truly. bless you. So you're, they want to take your daughter away in, in September? Just um, your I'd daughter. like to like, move this out of the, the front of the courthouse. Thank you. God bless, guys. Yeah. Can you see a picture?
clothes. Yeah, well, I'm not, hey, I'll tell you what. Let's restart. Let's restart so I can go back and, and redo it. All right? All right. Absolutely. Let's get this closed. Let's just go down here so we're out of the way. I have, like, so we're no longer a threat to the justices of the court. Yeah, so we don't, oh, we don't intimidate them. Yeah. And your dad comes in after like an underground Where's tunnel. Where's the article <laughs> saying John Walsh has to save his grandchildren from his crazy daughter? Right. Where's that even? Where's Let's talk road. about it. Yeah, where's the... You're hiding. How can I respect that man? How can I've I never be... been I'm heartbroken. This man was my everything, my entire life. You know? And for him to enable my mother and the abuse and the assaults biting me in front of my children and I keep my children and I from them because of it. And then you come after. I start asking about my brother Adam. You know, the court, you, frustratedwitness.com. All we have them everywhere. All the records are out. Anyone can look at them. Mm -hmm. After 40 years, you would see my parents' drug abuse, their lifestyle, my father's connections to drug trafficking. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's wild how this ignorance is occurring. And my children are the pawns missing and exploited he kidnapped my children he's exploiting us have, have you seen your father john do drugs himself oh he was yeah he was an alcohol look at the cover of the globe with his mistress with a massage tool in her hand i mean i've grown up with people who have no idea who these people are and i have i have honored my mother and father my entire life so so when did the relationship suddenly go when i started bad? asking questions about my brother adam when i started speaking up about the abuse and they started trying to frame me and attack me and my mother biting me and pulling my hair. When I started asking about Epstein, because all these people knew my dad, I had, you know, I started asking. I thought that that would be a commendable thing, being the daughter of John Walsh. I thought that that's what we did as a family. And then all of a sudden, in an ambush, in an ambush. Yeah, you're right. You know, they're just taken. My home's taken. My everything is taken. And one. they know that my children are my life. We've submitted text messages from them. My father has lied under oath. He has already submitted at least two false reports to DCF, which by each count is a third degree felony up to what, five What was years. he saying in those reports? What got my children taken to begin with, that I was holding them hostage in my home. Your Honor, she's holding those children hostage in her house. We need to get them out now. Hostage meaning what? You weren't letting them what out? What does that mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were in the community. If anything, that was during COVID, and people should have said that I had my children out in the community too much. Um, you know, saying that I have men... This is a playbook that they do that I want everyone to realize through CPS, through Hollywood, through all of it. And these are these go hand in hand. Um, and, and they said that I was psychologically abusing my children. They've said... Uh, what, what were the other allegations? Oh, I have a medical marijuana yeah. card. I've been healing cancer which I hope everyone learns about, Rick Simpson oil and the amazing things that have been kept from us in healing. They put, they totally took that out of a medical context and put into substance abuse, um, equating me to that of a heroin addict. Um, you know, my children were being homeschooled. We were in church. Uh, it's all been used, discriminated against. They even called me anti vaxxer But that's parental rights. I, that's... It is parental rights. And they even called me an anti vaxxer because I don't want my children, um, you know, injected with an experimental vaccine that we just simply don't know enough so about. So your father, yeah, that's it. did your father want them to be, have the vax? Oh, he's had, he's gotten court orders to have all of them vaccinated. Are they vaccinated? Um, they do not have the COVID vaccine yet, and that's another threat over that over me that I have to be in terror about every day. John Walsh has just given this authority to take children, to take them across state lines to the Finger Lakes, and then to come down here and have you know them injected with whatever. My boys have never been more sick since all of this.
my children beg to come home. Every, twice a week they do this to us. Do you now fear, fear that your children are in danger in John Walsh's hands? I, I always have. And the system doesn't care. The sheriff doesn't care. Um, why, why is that? Why don't you think they care? Is it because conflicts of interest? He worked with the no, sheriff's support? John Walsh. I mean, I understand that I'm going to meet a certain amount of resistance. I get it. You know, again, he, I believe the same narrative. He was my father and my, you know, savior for 40 years almost. And, um, you know, so I understand that this is very wild. For me, it's very wild as well. Um, but again, a truth, truth, you cannot change the truth. And a nation and people across the country have come forward saying how the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children had a part in exploiting them and their children. How the International Center for Missing and Exploited Children has, has aided and advised abusers to set mothers up and to get the kids back. We have runaways listed on the national database that are weeks old. How do you have weeks old runaways? That's higher statistics for higher funding. This is a huge issue. Um, and you can look at the podcasts I've done, and more and more is revealed every single day, and it gets deep. You know, the people that are coming forward with information about my dad and the past and everything is terrifying for me. And I shouldn't be in this position. I should be protected. My children and I should be protected. What was the outcome of today's hearing, Megan? I, I don't have even processed it yet, to be honest. I have no idea. You go into a kangaroo court. They tell you, you know, you're bullied, they're allowed to do whatever, they're accommodated, they're all whatever, and then it's, you know, get a get a court-appointed term, which we all know that that doesn't work because they don't put in evidentiary um, material, they don't do things, it's a racket, they all work together. For 40, he stated himself this morning how half of these people he's worked with for 40 years, and that's just what we're dealing with. It's unfortunate, and I hate to have to be the one to... To address this and say these things, but it's time. It's too much. I'm watching children and yeah. families ripped apart. Your father was has been a figurehead on, on in, in the news and all over TV for for decades. Mm -hmm. You know, finding fugitives and mm -hmm. you know the hunt yeah. and, and and finding missing children. You know, um, what do you say to that? The, the the people out there, you know, and support him and like what he's doing. Is there just another side of him that the public does not know about? I think that people forget about public personas versus private lives. And, uh, you know, again, I've honored my parents, and in no way do I want to be here sitting and saying any of this stuff. And I wish they weren't doing this. But the unfortunate reality is that there are, there's a lot that I went through all growing up that people have no idea about. The abuse, the secrets, what kind of the abuse? lifestyle. Uh, severe narcissistic abuse covertly by my mother um, and, and more. You know, they, they have different ways of doing it, and that's why they're still together. And that's, you know, what works for them. It's been an arranged relationship for a long time. Um, they live separate lives in the same house, and, uh, you know, my kids and I, I just tried to be back here in Vero for the community and, and to help take care of my parents as they age and so they would know my children. I've lived all over the world, and, uh, and I came back to this community. I had no idea what it had turned into at this point, sadly. Uh, what, what is your take on the Adam Walsh case? Like, uh, do you think, what, what's your take on that? Is, is, is that something that... You question him about over yeah. over the years? Yeah, and, and people, ha everyone has for 40 yeah. years. I'm not the one, <laughs> you know, just... this is, everyone's acting like this is some new thing. People, this has been a controversial case with many holes, many, you know, uh, misalignments through authority and different things for 40 years, uh, probably the largest in our country. And I simply started looking at the case files, not listening to the narrative that we were all given. What does this case look Look like without John Walsh on it, without it, uh, what was their lifestyle? Now, I've known my parents growing up, I know the infidelities, I know the abuse, I know the records, um, and uh, you know, what is it, what does this case look like without all of that, just by itself? And you know, even the depositions from my mother's significantly younger live in lover at the time of Adam's disappearance relay, you know, the severe drug abuse the uh, nefarious uh, affiliations and dealings with my father's bosses and my father going back and forth to the Bahamas, Paradise Island, 
um, as well as the finger lakes. I mean, it is all there. I want the case reopened. I want the case reopened. I want it re-looked at, and I want justice for my brother. Um, my parents also tried to sue Sears after his disappearance, and they dropped that case immediately once their lifestyle started to be exposed. My mother has huge holes in her story about the morning that she was with my brother, and then we have drug use, cocaine, and all of this hand in hand. Uh, Sears was actually able to prove that it wasn't the 10 minutes that my dad says. He was actually left for over 90 minutes by himself. And there's over 13 or 14 witnesses that did see a completely different take than what was reported by the Hollywood police. They were denied by the Hollywood police, and they've been retaliated and harassed since, even using DCF. We have so many people come forward that know information about my dad or the center or anything like that that have had DCF used against them in retaliation. And then we find Adam Walsh requirements and forms for interstate, out of state, and international adoption. This is, this is a monopoly. This is not okay. And the National Center wants to say that they're a clearinghouse. That's a financial statement in my in my world, in my definitions. Google it. That's a financial, st uh, you know, standing statement term. This is not children. Is that supposed? What's a clearinghouse for children? And how effective is that with our taxpayer money? Is there any other family, any other family members of yours, also questioning what you're saying? You know, what happened to Adam? Is it, is it just you, or is there other ones too? There, there, I have outside support from distant. You know, I mean, the, the sad thing is, is that my father doesn't even have to say anything and people are intimidated or they go along or they believe it. And, and that's the way the nature of people, I guess, sadly. But I do have, you know, outside relatives. I have an entire country that questions my father. And, you know, again, I, I'm not a bad guy here. I just want my children back. I want the system to be corrected. It's obviously put me in this place for a reason. And, uh, and we need the support of everyone just for what's right. You think this is some sort of retaliation or something to discredit you and make you a worse person for challenging your father? Mm -hmm. And I hate to even be forced to have to talk like that. I never sit and think people are conspiring. I'm one of the most open and honest people I know, and, and people that know me know that. Um, but, you know, again, this doesn't, if I make, I was a 38-year-old woman, 37-year-old woman asking my father about these things, you have a conversation with me. Yeah. You say, yeah, oh, let's talk about yeah. that. <laughs> hey, you don't disappear, stop talking to me, steal my children, have the sheriff fals falsely arrest me, take my home behind my back, and threaten me constantly. You know, the last message I try to reach out to him and say, you know, I forgive you. Please do what's right, Dad. I love you. You need help. And he he responded with, you know, looking like a group text saying, here, she's still harassing me and not focusing on getting her kids back. Make sure all the important people get this text message. I mean, this is besides, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. My own father, so. John Walsh. It, it's very hard to, uh, and that's part of it too. Do these things break you? It's to, it's to really, it's crazy making. It's part of narcissistic abuse. It's crazy making. It's to defame you and take everything, and then use the children for money. This is guardianship fraud they are committing, and it is to break me so that they can get a conservatorship, like this Britney Spears stuff, you know, going on, and and it's horrific. Yeah, and I think that it is in retaliation, and many people looking from the outside would have no other question about that. I think so. I think what what I found found interesting here was no media here. There was no mainstream blackout. media here. Why, why do you think that? It's I mean, blackout. considering it's John Walsh, a public figure. Well, don't they have the media protection plan? I missed the sign up for that, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's real. John Walsh is a huge figure. And if people start realizing about the National Center, about my brother Adam's case, what, what are the implications from that? That's huge. That's a whole country that they've misled. There's even a person in America right now saying that they are Adam Walsh and they're alive and my brother. And that's not my responsibility. My dad should be there leaving me and my children alone, making sure we're protected, and finding out if he's so heartbroken and been looking and doing all of this for 40 years. Go find out what that's about. You know? You stay strong. Uh, keep the fight. A lot of people support you. A lot of people are praying for you. 
Thank you. You're very brave taking on, you know, that agency up there in the courtroom yourself. But you are looking for lawyers. You are looking for help. You know, donations. Pe donations. People can reach out to you. My supporters have kept me afloat this this year. I could not be surviving and fighting for all of us without the donations, without the support. We truly just need good people to step forward and be speaking. I can't do us justice without the knowledge, you know. So going going through this whole process, like when you see your father on TV, what what's your reaction when you see him on TV? I, 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 I don't know. I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. And my brother going through it, you know, going along with it with him, when he, he's, you know, they're hiding their own crimes and their own life. And I haven't even said anything about that, what I know, and I know. What I would know. you like to see changed in the CPS process on how they try to terminate people's rights or take their kids away? What would you like to see changed? Oh, I have, I have great approaches that I would like to present um, as far as boards, oversight boards, but uh, I also think that people need to realize that, again, this is our taxpayer money, and there are better ways. We should not be taking children out of their primary homes. Our money should be going towards supportive, supporting the parents, supportive services. If a bill can't get paid, we're helping you this month, and we're going to check up on you. We're going to support you to get that job, so next month this isn't a problem. Problem. Uh, if you have a drug abuse, let's talk about what trauma led you. What are you going through right now that, that is allowing this? Because you know what? Your child needs you. Your child looks up to you. And we want to maintain that because we care about keeping families together and getting people healthy. You don't take people's children, create trauma for them, heartbreak. Can you imagine going through something, even struggling, and then your children are taken from you and you're expected to do better then? With that hung over you, that's that is extortion. You cannot hang children's lives over parents saying if you can't pay this much, if you don't make this much a year, if you don't do this case plan in this many months, that that is insanity to me. That is abuse. That is illegal and crimes against humanity and children. Stay strong for that. Yeah. Yeah.